Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. It's been a few weeks and we really haven't heard that much in the way of updates when it comes to the safety recall for the 6.2 liter L87 V8 from GM. Now in today's video, I do have a small update, but also I wanted to point you to a couple videos that I feel are a must watch in case you haven't seen them because they do add a lot of clarity when it comes to the discussion around oil viscosities. Now remember, I'm not reporting any of this just for fun. I actually have a 2022 Cadillac Escalade that's part of the safety recall. So I wanna know pretty much all the same things that you do. Let's go. First, we're gonna head over to the NHTSA's website and have a look at something. Now, whenever you head over to the site and you put in a qualifying vehicle for the safety recall, I think most of us spend our time here under recalls looking for updates. We click on engine failure here, we scroll down and we see there's still 19 documents in which I've summarized or reported on most of these in previous videos. However, if we go to manufacturer communications, you'll see that there is a long list of things here but right at the top, we have an update for May 23rd, 2025, components engine. If we open this up, we get a nice little summary for the latest version of our recall. So let's dig into it. Now I do read the comment sections, not only on my videos, but many others that I watch as well as forums. And I know a lot of you are wanting to see in writing something from GM that talks about special coverage when it comes to warranty of the affected vehicles or the engines as part of the safety recall. Well, here it is. This is one spot you can find it. And I know there's a couple others, but this one's clear as day. So we're gonna go through the summary and then we're gonna have a look at the bulletin that's also attached. Now in the world of the internet, this is four days old, which means it's ancient information. But for some of you, you may not have caught it, which is why I dubbed this video, you might have missed it. So we're gonna get into it now. I'm just gonna highlight some parts of the summary. You can read it all if you like. This special coverage covers if an engine failure occurs in the vehicle as a result of the condition described above for a period of 10 years or 150,000 miles or 240,000 kilometers, whichever occurs first, from the date the vehicle was originally placed in service, regardless of ownership. That's just a summary from the bulletin about the special coverage. Let's look at the bulletin itself. Now I printed it here so I could make myself some notes and highlight some things that I believe are important. And most of it is on the first page. Subject, the recall number, special coverage, L87 engine loss of propulsion, all the affected models of vehicles. General Motors is releasing special coverage N25249403 today. This is a phased launch, which again is a really important statement. We knew this recall was going to start with inventory that was on the lot for sale or that may have already been signed in by customers that was affected by the recall. Everyone else was to wait for the official recall notification from GM. Vehicles that are remedied and closed in the IVH under safety bulletins, and we have the three bulletins here, will be added to the special coverage population. The applicable warranty section on the investigate vehicle history, the IVH screen, will be updated regularly and without notice for future VIN additions. I take that as meaning we might have more VINs added to this recall. The applicable warranty section on the IVH screen will initially be updated May 23rd, 2025. It will be updated regularly and without notice for future VIN additions. Please verify a VIN's involvement in the special coverage by checking in IVH. IVH is the best source for individual VIN inquiries. A stock VIN list is not included as our records show there are no vehicles in dealer new inventory. End of message. Okay, so that's interesting on its own, but if we skip to page two, there's nothing really new there we don't know. We skip to page three, nothing really new there, we don't know, but I wanted to read a couple things on page four regarding the service procedure. Now, most of us know what the service procedures are at this point when it comes to this recall. However, I wanted to read through the three points because this is more definitive now. We have a date of May 23rd, 2025. It's got the GM logo on it. So bear with me, let's just go through it and it might be news to some of you. So number one, verify any of the field actions under the recall number have been completed and closed in IVH prior to moving forward with this bulletin. Number two, a vehicle may come in with a seized engine or the P0016 code or a knocking issue. If a vehicle is exhibiting any of these conditions, check it for basic maintenance or neglect. If the vehicle is not showing any obvious signs of neglect and has a seized engine or a P0016 code, replace the engine. 
refer to the engine replacement procedure. If the vehicle is showing signs of neglect, such as low or no oil level, has been hydrolocked, etc., the vehicle is not covered under this special coverage. If the vehicle has a knocking noise, run the L87 Pico test per field action. Determine whether to replace the engine based on the results of the test. If the vehicle has a valve train or other top end issue, it is not covered under the special coverage. Therefore, if you do have a top end issue, you'll have to rely on your powertrain warranty. So that's just something in the manufacturer communication bulletin I wanted to bring to your attention so you could just be fully informed on the subject. On one of my past videos, somebody commented something that I just wanted to highlight in this video. So Kyle says, I finished the service for my 23 Chevy Silverado 1500. I passed the inspection and on my Chevrolet app, it shows that I have a 10 year warranty for when the truck was purchased or up to 150,000 miles. The warranty is labeled as special coverage and it's for the recall. I was hoping to get a screenshot to share with you in time for this video, but that just didn't happen. But now we know if our engines do pass inspection, we should get the same message in our app. Now outside of the NHTSA's website, there's tons of discussions around the safety recall. And I just wanted to point you to those two YouTube videos that I feel are a must watch, just in case you missed them. And you probably haven't because based on the views, they're super popular. Now contrary to popular belief, I don't check YouTube every single day, but some of you do, and you share these findings in the comment section. So please continue to do so because many of us might miss these things without your help. So first up, if you haven't seen the latest video from Engineering Explained, you are missing out, especially if the conversation around oil viscosity is getting to you. I think it does a wonderful job of illustrating the oil viscosity debate. And the second one, which is only a few weeks old now, is from the Motor Oil Geek. It was probably the first and best that I had seen that really helped break down the oil viscosity debate. So definitely check out both those videos if you haven't already. Now this video is short and hopefully sweet. If you wanna show your support, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing, love to have you. And I'll keep watching for relevant updates and let you know when I find something of interest. Talk to you next time.